Alright, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we're going to be updating you guys on the upcoming and ongoing hurricane season, sea surface temperatures, the dust that's out there. We're going to be talking about all of those things in just a moment. For today's comment of the day, I want to know, do you think we will have any more tropical activity in the month of July, or do you think we're going to have to wait till the month of August? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below, and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. Let's get straight into this video, and first things first, we're taking a look here at the dust that is out there as we speak now, and as you can see, there's some areas with much more potent dust, and then there's some areas where there is some clearing. Now, if there was a tropical wave located in, let's say, the southern Caribbean or maybe there by the Bahamas, it would have a pretty easy time developing. There isn't really any dust in that area. You can see there is some by Mexico, by Central America, and then also for sure, they're in the main development region, but sandwiched in between, there is actually a clearing there. But fortunately for pretty much everybody in North America, Central America, and the Caribbean, there is not a tropical wave there, so that is not expected to occur. If there was, however, it would not be interfered with this dust. There is some waves heading off of Africa, but there's a ton of dust right there. Whenever you see those whites and yellows, it is going to be nearly impossible for tropical development to occur. It's way, way, way too dry because of all of this dust coming off of Africa. Now, let's just take this to about 65 hours out. It's going to be around Sunday. Uh, so in three days from now, as you can see, the Gulf of Mexico, the Caribbean, basically all of these western areas clear of a lot of this dust. And then in the main development region, which is the area in between the Caribbean and Africa, we call that our main development region because that's where, well, it's in the name. That's where most of our main development happens. So that area has a moderate amount of dust. I think that's going to be enough to pretty much prohibit any tropical activity. Now around this point, this is what our uh, cyclonic vorticity looks like. And this just shows us some kind of large scale rotation going on in the atmosphere. Things that largely rotate in a, in a fashion that is on that big of a scale would be a tropical system, for instance. So this is gonna be an easy way for us to tell where there is some tropical activity. We can also see some non-tropical low pressure systems up there in the Northern Atlantic. That is very typical. Those are non-tropical and those are typical uh, strong storms. They're just not tropical at all. The very typical, pretty much all times of year for that Northern region to be dealing with these very strong storms. Uh, but we do see some reds showing up in near Africa. I, I could see how there could be some tropical development around this time frame. And also by the time we move this towards July 22nd, so we move this on quite a while, uh, that's going to be six days from now, you can see that there is a kind of red area there. That could be our next tropical wave offshore of Africa. But again, there is dust in this area. It's just a moderate amount by this point. So it will be possible. I would just say it's not going to be quite likely uh, by this point or as favorable as possible. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to move on and we're going to take a little bit of a more longer range look at that dust. And then we're going to take another look at the vorticity in the long range. Then we're going to move on and talk about the European model's probability of tropical depression over the next 10 days. And then we're going to start talking about sea surface temperatures and how things are coming along on that front. All right, now here is the dust, and this is going to be by about the a.m. hours on Saturday, July 24th. So this is two days later than the last rain we took a look at. And as you can see, a lot of this dust makes its way towards the Gulf of Mexico. We see some in the Caribbean and some in the main development region there. So this is interesting because it's pretty much everywhere. You can see that anywhere a tropical system would develop, it would pretty much be impacted by this dust. The one thing that tropical systems will have going for them is that it's not that potent. It's in the moderate range here. We see a lot of pinks, magentas. That's going to be uh, pretty much in that more medium shade. If you look at the bottom uh, the bottom of your screen, you will see the color table there. It is kind of more in that middle portion there. We don't see any of the oranges, yellows, or whites, very, very bright whites going on. Uh, so that would be the very high amounts that would make it pretty much impossible for tropical development. We're in the range where it's going to it's going to slow down tropical development, but it might not make it impossible. That's where we're at right now. And as you can see, this just continues on all the way to the end of the model run because this is going to be Sunday night, and that's hours 240. Most models only go out to hours 240. That's exactly 10 days from the time they run. That's a very common time for models to end. And for this model, this is the end of this model run. So you can see it's pretty much widespread again, but again, none of those oranges, yellows, or whites are going on. Now, as far as vorticity here... We can see that this is going to be about 2 p.m. on Saturday, July 24th. 
As you can see, there is some waves. Look at look at Africa there. You can see there is plenty of that red going on. That is pretty much tropical waves that are heading offshore of Africa. It's just kind of like, are they going to have an easy time developing, or are they going to pretty much just fizzle out? And, and it's more likely that they will fizzle out at this point with the amount of dust than them developing. But it's not impossible at this point for them to develop. And you can see, by the time we reach about the end of this model run, which is the same exact time of the end of the last model we took a look at, hours 240, we see a lot of these reds move off of Africa over the ocean, but again, there will be plenty of dust around, so it's going to be hard for these storms to develop still, uh, even if they make it over water. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to move on, and we're going to take a look at the probability of tropical depression for days 0 through 3, which will be July 16th through July 19th, and then we're going to take a look at days 7 through 10, uh, July 23rd through July 26th and just see if there is any probability of tropical depression status coming up anytime soon. All right, now here we are taking a look at day zero through three or Friday through Monday or the 16th through the 19th. As you can see, there's two areas of interest here. We have one there near Central America and where it kind of connects there with South America. There is a 20 to 30 percent chance of tropical development according to this model and then we also have that area offshore of africa over the next three days where there's a 50 to 60 percent chance of tropical depression status sometimes this model shows these areas of interest that aren't really in reality a chance of tropical development but that one near africa has my attention but there is a lot of dust there right now so i don't know if it would develop by day 7 through 10, we have still that area near Central America and South America. It always happens to have an area of probability around there, and it usually isn't going to occur. So I don't really think that's something we should be technically worried about right now. Obviously, if it increases those chances or if the National Hurricane Center was to hop on board, we should start to pay closer attention. But for now, I'm not really worried about that one. Day 7 through 10 still, we're taking a look at the one offshore of Africa now, and there's a 10 to 30% chance there offshore of Africa. Still, that dust is probably going to prohibit any of that from going on. Here's the sea surface temperatures, and this has kind of shifted a little bit. We've moved more towards a La Nina over the past, I, I don't know, it's been about a week, maybe a little less since I made a hurricane season update. Enough has changed for me to want to update this, uh, so we've moved more towards a La Nina in the meantime. The main development region in the Atlantic has warmed significantly. We'll talk about that a little bit later on when we take a look at it on a chart. But let's zoom into the Atlantic, and as you can see, the Gulf is near normal. The main development region has some warmer areas and some colder areas. It's mostly colder at this point, but it is on a warming trend. And then areas offshore of the East Coast are warmer than normal. So that's kind of where we're at right now. Once we take a look at the seven-day change, you can see things in the in our Enso region there. We're offshore of Central America in the Pacific. You see a lot of reds and darker blues where things have changed a lot. We've seen a significant amount of warming in some spots and a significant amount of cooling in some spots, but overall we've headed more towards the La Nina over the past seven days, like I said. Let's zoom into the Atlantic again, and as you can see, a lot of warming has occurred here, especially there in our main development region. You look at the Caribbean and you take that towards Africa, we see mostly warming has occurred over the past seven days. We see some blues there, uh, but I think Overall, mostly warming has occurred for this region, also offshore of the East Coast as well. And we see a lot of cooling there for the Southern Caribbean, Southern Gulf of Mexico as well. Here is our Nino 3.4 index, or this is how we kind of measure La Nina or El Nino. And as you can see, it has cooled since July 2nd. We've headed more towards a neutral end zone. We're heading more towards La Nina. Here's the Atlantic MDR, which is our, again, main development region. I've mentioned that a couple of times. You can see we've been on a warming trend for a couple of days now. Uh, where we're heading more towards that neutral line. So I think that where we're at right now, if I'm using the climatology of the last maybe 10 years, I would say it's more likely than not that we see a warming trend continue with the MDR and it heads straight towards a warmer than normal main development region. Here's our North Atlantic overall, and it overall has been slowly cooling since July began. Uh, and I'm interested to see where this continues to go. I wouldn't be surprised if we see this curve back up because of how much warming is going on in some other regions. So if the areas that are currently cooling kind of slow down, we would see mostly a warming trend for the entire Atlantic. For today's confidence tab, I'm at a three out of six because this is a little bit of a longer range video. So I'm going with a little bit of a low ball there, but I do feel quite confident in a lot of the things I'm talking about. There will be dust. There will be a lack of tropical development most, most likely. And it's mostly the sea surface temperature speculation that gets us the lower confidence there because that's looking a lot more long range, like a couple months out, things like that. 
For today's comment of the day, I asked you guys, in the United States, when do you think we will have a pattern change? We've seen a lot of heat out west. I made a video about this yesterday, a huge heat wave out west, and then a lot of cooler temperatures out east. And David Gage said, I think that we will see a pattern shift sometime around the end of July going into the month of August. And I think that this is likely... Uh, Oftentimes, it happens that around the end of a month, we do see a pattern kind of break up. I don't know why that is. There's another interesting anomaly in weather. This one just always blows my mind, guys, and I'm sure it's going to blow you guys' minds too. Statistically, using climatology from basically recorded history here in the United States or like accurately recorded history, it is much more likely. And when I say much, I mean significantly more likely to the point where it's actually puzzling, significantly more snowstorms and winter storms occur over the weekend than they do during the weekdays. And the most puzzling part about this is that there's less days in the weekend than there is in the weekdays. And there's absolutely no reason why a winter storm would choose to happen on a weekend. Like, it doesn't make any sense. I've talked to a lot of people who have made that observation on their own. They're, they're thinking a lot of snowstorms happen on Saturdays and Sundays in the United States. Well, you're not alone because it actually is a proven statistic that snowstorms and winter storms have just been more likely to happen on the weekend. Don't know why, but that's part of the reason why I love weather so much is weird things like that. For today's patron highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our platinum patrons, John Ben Benick, James Wade, Dobie Nagel, Lord of the Pan, and Donna Carnes, alongside our diamond patrons, Bill Roberts, Marcus Connolly, Noah Harley, Michael Cotalesa, Catbite, Charles Stinnett, Cindy Klein, Mark J, Luke Falego, Gary's, John Colisi, Dwight Phelan, and Steven Krenenthal. If you would like to be a part of this exciting Patreon page, an exciting patron end screen today can do so by joining our very awesome Patreon page in the description and in the pinned comments down below. I would also like to thank our channel members Hair Farms 1 and Catbite as well. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to destroy the like button, leave a comment down below to help that YouTube algorithm out, to help my channel out. And also be sure to subscribe if you like weather related content. I will see you guys in the next video.